Yo, what's going on buddy? This is Rockin' here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make transitions for your Valorant montages and edits or just gaming montages and edits in general. It doesn't have to be Valorant, but I'll be showing you using that. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make swipe transitions, rotate transitions and blur slash exposure transitions, as well as how to make your transitions look better. If you'd rather use transition presets, I did release a pack a couple days ago completely for free, so you can go and download that. There'll be a link in the top right corner right now, as well as the end card on this video and in the description if you want to check check that out they're really easy to use you just drag and drop them onto your compositions and they pretty much work and they're going to be a few of the transitions that i show you how to make today however obviously if you'd rather learn how to make them yourself then that's what this tutorial is for okay so to start off with i'm going to show you how to make the swipe transition so all you're going to want to do is drag on your clip into your composition and make sure that it's the size of your composition so in my case that's 2560 by 1440 yours may be 1920 by 1080 whatever resolution you're using it will work the same and you're just going to want to go to the part in the clip where you want to make the cut so for me i'm using the same clip you guys may want to use two different clips it works exactly the same i'm just going to be using one for the sake of simplicity so for example if i you know i want to make a cut here for example i'm going to press ctrl shift e to split the layer i'm going to go to the point that i want to cut to which i'll say will be around here i'm going to press ctrl shift d to split that layer and i'm going to delete the middle part and move this so that there is so that they line up perfectly and there's no gap in between of course if you're using two separate clips you won't have to do any of the splitting or anything that i just did you can just line them up how i've got them lined up like this now to do the swipe transition you can only an effect called motion tile now to add this to your clips you want to come over to effects and presets search motion and you'll if you scroll down you'll see stylized motion tile you're just going to drag and drop that onto your first clip and then up here you're going to see output width and you're going to change that from 100 to 200 and you're going to tick mirror edges now you're going to come up to where it says motion tile on the left press ctrl c click on your second clip and ctrl v to paste it onto that other clip if you can't see the effect controls up here you may need to navigate from project to effect controls and then that should appear otherwise you can access it by hitting these down arrows to effects and all the controls will be here as well okay so now you've applied motion tile to your clips you're going to want to start positioning positioning them so that they slide across the screen. In order to do that, you're going to figure out how long you want your transition to be. So I'm just going to go to about here. So my transition is going to last this amount of time. So I'll go to about you know, somewhere like this which is where I want my transition to start. I'm gonna press P on my keyboard whilst I've got the first clip selected. So I'm gonna press P and it's gonna bring up the, the position. And then I'm gonna click the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Then I'm gonna zoom in, come to where the split is, but go back one frame so that you can actually see the clip that you're affecting. And then you're gonna change this first number in the position to double whatever is there at the moment. So for example, mine's 1280. So by doubling it, that's gonna be 2560. And I'm gonna hit enter and you can see that it's done this to the screen. And essentially all it's done is just moved my clip over to the side and the edges been mirrored because of this motion tile effect. If yours is 1080p, you also probably say 960, in which case double that is 1920. So you'll just want to change that number there. Don't worry about the second one. You just want to make sure that this number is double what you had there initially. Now what you're going to do is select both of these keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard and then come over to the graph editor by clicking this up here and you're going to see this graph appears. If you have a graph that looks like this, it's because you're on the speed graph. In order to change it back, just right click and hit value graph and you should get a graph that looks like this now in order to manipulate these curves you're going to want to come over to where it says position right click and hit separate dimensions and now you can see the curves have slightly changed color and we'll now be able to control them so basically what we're going to do is control the speed that it animates at the moment it's a pretty linear curve so it's literally just gonna it's just gonna move across at roughly the same speed the whole way across whereas we want it to speed up as it gets further across the screen so in order to do this you're just going to click this dot over here and drag this across like this and then click this dot up here and drag this down slightly so what that's going to tell us after effects to do is start off slow and then speed up speed up speed up into the transition so if i play this for you you can see it does a little slide into this other clip so now what we need to do is make the other clip slide in the opposite direction so in order to do that i'm going to come over to the other clip place my current time indicator right where the gap is in between these two clips and i'm going to select the second clip and i'm going to press p on my keyboard and now what I'm going to do is change this number where it says 1280. So by clicking zero, you can see it's now done the opposite. It's now gone the opposite direction to the way that the other one went. Now, in order to make sure that the transition lasts the same amount of time on both clips, you know, just make sure that you select the first clip and press P and you'll be able to see the keyframes here. And if you just make a keyframe on your first clip like this, as you can see, there's now one there. You're just going to want to try and make sure that the gap you have here is equal to the gap that you have on this side. So I'm going to come to about there, which I'd say is about equal. And I'm going to set this keyframe back to whatever it was originally. 
so in my case that was 1280 and I'm going to hit enter and you can see it's automatically added a keyframe and I'd say that these two keyframes are about the same width apart as these two keyframes. You can go in and count the frames if you want but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to make it relatively simple and straightforward uh, and that's just an easier way to do it. You don't have to be exact, it's not really going to be noticeable. And then all you're going to do is copy exactly what you did to these two keyframes by selecting them, pressing F9 going to the graph editor, make sure that you have position, right click and hit separate dimensions. So now you can control the curves separately and you're just gonna drag this curve across like this and this curve up like this. And you can see that it's gonna speed up, speed up, speed up and then eventually slow down. So if we watch this transition, you can see it's a nice slide. It just goes across, gets to the middle part and swaps and there you go. Super duper simple but really effective. If you want to add more layers on top of this, so for example if you had some motion blur or something like that, I'll show you how to do that later on in the tutorial when we get to our blur and expose transitions. But for the moment that's the basics of it. Of course you can play around with the timings and the speed in the graph editor or by moving these keyframes closer or further apart if you'd like to. And that's the beauty of being able to make these transitions yourself instead of relying on a pack like the one that I created. However the pack is significantly more efficient. Okay so next up is rotate transitions so you're going to do exactly the same as you did before by clicking on your clip coming over and typing motion tile I actually have a plugin called video copilot fx console so I can just press control and space and search for motion and add it onto my clip like that I do recommend that plugin it just makes applying effects a lot simpler and easier so if you'd like to download that it's completely free I'll leave a link in the description or you can just add it the normal way that I showed you earlier it doesn't really make a difference but I'm just going to do it that way because that's how I'd always do it and then you're going to do pretty much the same thing as you did before except you're going to change output width to 200 and also the output height to 200 and you're going to tick mirror edges and now what you're going to do is much the same as what you did before come to the point where you want the transition to start so for me that's going to be about here and I'm now going to press R on my keyboard and I'm going to tick the stopwatch to keyframe it go to the frame before the split and I'm going to change this second value here where it says zero degrees to 180 and you'll see that has now flipped the clip completely upside down. If we scrub back through the clip, you can see what the motion tile is doing, where it's mirroring what's happening on either side. If you don't have the motion tile enabled, you get these black spots, which you don't want, and it ruins the transition completely. So by having the motion tile, it just fills the whole screen. As you can see, I do have these little black sections in the corner, in which case 200 may not be enough. You may want to increase the output height to something like 210 or something like that, just to cover these corners if you get anything like that. Otherwise, you can just bang it up to something like 300. It really doesn't make a difference just make sure that it is a minimum to fill up the screen. So for me, 210 looks good. I'm not seeing any black spots. So for me, that looks good. Now I'm gonna do much the same as with the slide transition. I'm gonna select both the keyframes and press F9, then come into the graph editor and make sure that you're on the value graph. And I'm gonna do much of the same thing where I'm gonna grab this first point and drag this across, grab this second point and drag it down. And you can see that now we've got this speed ramp. And then I'm gonna go back and you can see if we watch it, it slowly speeds up into to the transition just like that so if i play that for you you can see it speeds up as it rotates more now what we're going to do is come over to the second clip and we're going to make sure that we copy our motion tile from this clip onto that one so that we have the same settings applied so i'm just going to click motion tile control c onto the second clip and control v and now what you're going to do is pretty much the inverse of what you did to the other clip. So I'm going to press R on my keyboard. And I'm going to change the rotation degrees to 180, just like we did with the other clip. And I'm going to set a keyframe. And then I'm going to come forwards to roughly the same width as we have between these two, which is going to be about that far. And then all I'm going to do is change this to 360. And you'll see that now it will continue rotating in that direction. So it's going to rotate right, rotate right, and continue rotating. You'll notice when you type 360, it will update this first value to 1. And that basically is just how many rotations the clip's made. So 360 would be one full rotation. So that's why that's changed. Don't worry about it. That's how it's supposed to be. And then what I'm going to do is select both of these keyframes. And I'm going to press F9. Go into the graph editor and do the inverse of what we did before. So I'm going to pull this one up so that it starts off fast, pull this across so that it slows down. And then if we preview this, you can see it's just a really simple, nice rotation transition. Not really much to it. Just like the swipe, it's really simple, yet really effective. And of course, we can add blurs and exposure and motion blur and things like that to the clip should we want to do that later on. And now for the final transition, this is going to be our blur slash exposure. And basically what that's going to do is blur the screen as the transition happens, as well as raising the brightness and then reduce the blur and brightness as it comes out of the transition. So in order to do that, you're just going to want to come onto your clip, find the point where you want the transition 
transition to start so for me that's here i'm going to come over to effects and presets or just use fx console by pressing control and space if you have the plugin installed obviously otherwise just go over to effects and presets and search for it and i'm going to search for gaussian blur not the legacy version just the normal one i'm going to click that and it's going to apply to my clip and then i'm going to tick next to blurriness and set a keyframe go into the frame just before the split and i'm going to set a blurriness value to around 10. depending on your resolution you may need to change the blurriness so for example i don't think that's quite enough so i may bump it up to 15 and i think that's pretty good and if we drop down here you'll be able to see in the effects and gorge and blur that these keyframes have applied as we can't see them usually like we would with the position and rotation and then you're also going to want to add an exposure so you're going to click on the clip and add the effect exposure and click and you're going to go back onto your first keyframe where you set the gaussian blur to zero and you're going to tick exposure at zero and you're going to come to the last keyframe where you set the gaussian blur to whatever value you chose so for me that's 15 and you're going to set the exposure to a value like one or two so i'm going to go for two and you can see it just makes the clip slightly brighter if i come down to the exposure you can see if i go into master the keyframes are here as well and then all you're going to want to do is select all the keyframes and press f9 then select the gaussian blur one specifically come into the graph editor and just drag this one down slightly so that it speeds up and then do the exact same for the exposure and you're just going to drag this down slightly so that both of the curves the gaussian blur and the exposure should have roughly the same curve so if we look at the gaussian one you can see it has pretty much the identical curve to the exposure and now you're going to do the exact inverse of these frames to your other clip so what i'm going to do is select gaussian blur and select exposure by holding control to select them both so gaussian blur hold control click exposure and that should select them both then press control c come onto my second clip and move my current time indicator to the first frame of that clip and press ctrl v and you should see now if i drop down over here on the second clip in the effects you can see it's applied the exact same keyframes if i go into the master tab of exposure you can see it's applied the exact same keyframes and then all i'm going to want to do is move these two keyframes over to the other side of these ones and maintain this sort of gap so i'm going to go to about there looks about roughly the same of course you can measure it if you feel like it for the sake of the tutorial and simplicity i'm not going to and then you just going to select all four of them and drag the keyframes so that they line up with the first frame of this clip now if you go into the graph editor by selecting the keyframes going into the graph editor you can see the curve may be slightly different so you're just going to want to drag it and fix it so that it is doing the same speed ramp that we had on the other side that might be a little too extreme actually and then do the same for the exposure and as you can see if i play this clip it does a blur and flash during the transition just like that now in order to improve upon these transitions you can add the blur and expose to your swipes and your rotates as well as some motion blur i wouldn't recommend using gaussian blur and motion blur i mean you can do if you feel like it i would if i was using a plugin like rsmb which i'll explain in a minute however you don't have to so for example if i come onto the first clip where we added our exposure and gaussian blur and i grab that and hold control and grab the exposure and press control c and then go onto our swipe transition and go down to where our first frame of our transition was over here. Select our first clip and press Control V. You can now see that it's added our other effects on. You then want to make sure that you line up these keyframes with the other keyframes that you used. So I'm gonna drag these two across so that they are directly above these other two so that the effect lasts for the same amount of time. And if you check the curve, it should be pretty preserved. So in which case that's fine for me, there's no need to change that. And then I'm gonna do the exact same for the second clip. So if I come over to blur and expose and and grab these two and press control C onto the second clip press control V go down to the effects and line up these keyframes with these keyframes and the graph should be pretty preserved as you can see it is now what that's going to do is add the blur and exposure to our slide which is what you'll notice I did in my transitions pack and I just think it adds a little extra something to the transition and just makes it a bit smoother so if I watch this through you can see it does the blur and the flash as it swipes and i think that looks much better than just having the swipe there itself you can do the exact same to the rotation so you'll follow the exact same steps by lining up the keyframes and copying and pasting over if you didn't do a blur and expose transition before like i did you can just recreate and follow these exact same steps and apply it to the clips that we use the swipe on obviously you don't have to you know make the transition separately and copy and paste them over you can just follow the exact same steps that i did on the blur and expose transition and add it onto your swipe ones i'm sure you guys can figure out 
out how to do that and it just makes for a much better transition in my opinion. Another thing you can do is come to where the start of the transition is or I'd say one frame before and then press Control shift d to split the layer, come onto the first layer and delete all the effects because you don't really need them because they're specifically just for the transition. Come across to the second clip, go to one frame after this transition and press Control shift d over there and then delete these effects and then if you select over here motion blur, click on this layer, enable the motion blur, click on this layer and enable the motion blur and then all that's going to do is apply motion blur to the clips where the transitions are and it just makes the transitions even smoother than they were already. You may not want the motion blur across all of your clips if you do obviously you don't have to split them like I did as I'm just isolating the motion blur to these two sections. If you did if you wanted the motion blur to apply to your whole clip then of course you can not bother splitting these and I'll just apply it to the whole clip. I don't typically add the motion blur because I use a plugin called RSMB which is a plugin that I recommend everyone gets. I believe it's around £40, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's around that margin. I did make a video on most recommended plugins for editing and I did cover it in there. So if you want to watch that, the link will be in the top right corner as well as in the description. And basically what it is, is just a better version of the normal After Effects motion blur. And I add it to all of my edits at the end when I'm done with them across all my clips and it just smooths out any motion both in transitions and in the gameplay. So if I play this for you, you'll notice that it is even smoother with the motion blur. As you can see, if I pan through, you can see that this is the motion blur. If I disable the motion blur, you can see what the difference makes. So this is with Gaussian blur and motion blur. You don't have to have both enabled. So if I take the Gaussian blur off, you can see that's what it would look like. And then with the motion blur. So you don't really need them both. It does just make the blur a little bit overkill. But of course, you can leave them both on if you want. I'd normally turn the Gaussian blur off as I think it just looks a bit cleaner. So if I play this for you, you can see it's just not quite as blurred and it's just specifically the motion that's blurred. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. It was highly requested from a lot of you guys to show you how I make my transitions. If you'd rather not go through the effort of manually making these every time, you can download my transitions pack completely for free, which includes transitions just like this, as well as glitch and zoom transitions. They're completely free and easy to use. You just drag and drop them onto your clips and that's pretty much it. And it just saves you a lot of time having to recreate these transitions every time. If you'd like to learn how to do any other kind of effects, as well as make your montages and edits, I have a load of tutorials on my channel which are all in my tutorials playlist which will be as the end card on this video and also in the description so feel free to check them out as well as make sure you watch all my montages and edits for any inspiration and other than that i'll catch you guys in the next video